Hello from Who Died Today America, and welcome back to our channel. In the past few days, we have received somber news about the passing of extraordinary talents. Today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Additionally, we will recap the stars whom we have recently lost. Before we begin, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Jacqueline Jose, a beloved actress known for her amazing talent and down-to-earth personality, passed away on March 3rd at the age of 59. While we don't yet know what caused her passing, the news is hitting Filipinos hard. Jacqueline, whose real name was Mary Jane Guck, started acting way back in the day, even working with legendary directors like Lino Bracca. Over the years, she built a successful career, winning awards and stealing hearts with her performances in both movies and TV shows. Remember that incredible role in Ma Rosa? That was Jacqueline, and it even earned her the Best Actress Award at the Cannes Film Festival in 2016, making her the first Southeast Asian actress to win that prestigious honor. But Jacqueline wasn't just about awards. She was known for being incredibly versatile, taking on all kinds of roles, from big leads to memorable guest appearances. You might have recently seen her in GMA shows like Mag Pakailan Man or Bolera. Jacqueline's passion for acting and dedication to her craft were truly inspiring. Her sudden passing leaves a big hole in the entertainment industry and the hearts of everyone who knew and loved her. While we mourn her loss, we'll always remember Jacqueline Jose for her talent, humor, and the love she had for her family. Rest in peace, Jacqueline. Iris Apfel, the fashion icon whose outfits were as colorful as her personality, passed away at the age of 102. Apfel wasn't afraid to break the rules, rocking unique styles since she was young. She studied art history and design, putting those skills to good use throughout her life. Marrying her husband Carl in 1948, they tackled business ventures together, even working on the White House. In 1950, she launched her own textile company, taking her love for fabrics global. Apfel's eye-catching outfits, complete with giant glasses and wild mixes of patterns, made her a fashion legend. She even starred in a documentary, Iris, in 2014, and kept rocking the fashion world well into her 90s even signing with a modeling agency at 97. Throughout her life, Apfel did it all. Textiles, design, teaching, and of course, inspiring people with her unique style and infectious energy. She proved that age is just a number, and you can always embrace your individuality no matter what. She'll be remembered for her creativity, her spirit, and her reminder to live life in full color. W.C. Clark the Austin blues icon they called the Godfather, passed away at the age of 84. This wasn't just any loss for the music world. Clark was a mentor to legends like Stevie Ray Vaughan, and his influence on the blues scene in Austin is undeniable. Clark's story began in church choirs, but by 16, he was already belting out blues at the legendary Victory Grill. He jammed with the greats, mentored countless musicians, and helped Austin's music scene become the vibrant hub it is today. He wasn't just about his own killer riffs. He shared his passion and knowledge, leaving a lasting impact on everyone he met. His final performance just days before passing away is a testament to his dedication to the blues. While W.C. Clark may be gone, his music, the countless musicians he touched, and the memories he created live on. He'll be remembered for his smooth Texas blues, soulful voice, and for being a true champion of Austin's music scene. Rock on in peace, W.C., we lost a Quebec legend with the passing of Paul Hood at 69. He passed away on March 2nd after complications from brain surgery. Many of us knew Hood from his iconic radio voice, having hosted shows on BPM Sports, CKAC, and 98.5 FM. He was a staple on the airwaves, keeping listeners entertained with his wit and friendly personality. But Hood wasn't just a radio guy. He also brought his talents to the big screen, most notably playing the hilarious character Fern in the Quebec comedy series, Les Boy. Fern, the brainy goalie who could spout hockey stats like nobody's business, was a fan favorite, and Hood brought him to life perfectly. The news of Hood's passing hit Quebec hard. 
Tributes poured in on social media, with fans, friends, and even Premier Legault sharing their memories of the man. They all talked about his humor, his kindness, and the way he could light up a room. Paul Hood will be remembered for his larger-than-life personality, his contributions to Quebec media, and the joy he brought to countless people. Rest in peace, Paul. The music world is mourning the loss of U.S.-French pianist Eugen Injic, who passed away at the age of 76 from an autoimmune disease. Injic was a true master of his craft, known for his exceptional talent and playful spirit. While his fourth-place finish at the prestigious 1970 Warsaw Chopin competition didn't earn him the top prize, it solidified his place among the most promising young pianists. He went on to hone his skills under the legendary Arthur Rubinstein and Nadia Boulanger, refining his technique and shaping his unique approach to music. Injik wasn't just about technical prowess, though. He was known for his infectious sense of humor, which he even brought to his program notes on occasion. His playful spirit, however, never overshadowed his profound connection to music. His performances, described as magical, combined technical brilliance with deep emotional resonance. Tributes have poured in from fellow musicians like Alicia Fedorkiewicz and Anna Sinkovec, highlighting Injik's kindness, generosity, and lasting impact. He leaves behind a treasure trove of recordings and the cherished memories of those who knew him. While his absence will be deeply felt, Eugen Injik's legacy as a musician, teacher, and friend will continue to inspire for generations to come. The professional wrestling world mourns the passing of Canadian legend Paul the Butcher Vachon, who passed away at the age of 86. Vachon, a member of the renowned Vachon wrestling family, began his career in the 1950s. He teamed up with his brother Maurice, forming a formidable tag team that secured championships in both the AWA and NWA. Vachon's influence extended beyond the ring. He served as the promoter for Quebec's Grand Prix wrestling in the 1970s. Later, Vachon joined the World Wrestling Federation between 1973 and 1985, solidifying his position in wrestling history. He retired from in-ring competition in 1987, leaving behind a legacy of fierce competition and memorable moments. Vachon's family ties to wrestling run deep. He was one of 13 children, with a brother, Maurice, and sister, Vivian, also wrestling professionally. Notably, he was the adoptive father of the late Luna Vachon, further solidifying the Vachon name in wrestling history. Throughout his career, Vachon battled various health challenges, including overcoming several battles with cancer. He leaves behind a long and successful career, the respect of the wrestling community, and a legacy that will be remembered by fans for years to come. WrestleZone extends its heartfelt condolences to the Vashon family, friends, and fans during this difficult time. The entertainment world lost a bright light with the passing of actress Anne Whitfield at the age of 85. She passed away on February 7th after a tragic accident while walking in her Washington neighborhood. Many will remember Whitfield for her role as Susan Waverly, the granddaughter, in the cherished holiday film White Christmas but her career spanned far beyond that iconic scene. Starting at the young age of seven, she found her voice on the radio, performing in shows like Our Miss Brooks and One Man's Family. The Mississippi native went on to appear in numerous television shows throughout the 50s and 60s, including Gunsmoke, Perry Mason, and That Girl. She also graced the silver screen in films like Juvenile Jungle and Tick, Tick, Tick. While acting was her passion, Whitfield was much more than just a Hollywood star. In the 1970s, she made a life-changing decision, moving to Washington and pursuing a degree in communications. She then dedicated herself to public service, working for the state's Department of Ecology. Whitfield's passion extended to activism and community organizing, making a positive impact beyond the stage and screen. Even in her later years, Whitfield remained active and adventurous. An avid hiker, she celebrated her 85th birthday by conquering the Dolomite Mountains in Italy. She leaves behind a legacy of not only a successful acting career, but also a life filled with purpose and a commitment to making a difference. A true inspiration, Anne Whitfield will be deeply missed by her family, friends, and the countless fans she entertained throughout her life. We lost a comedy giant with the passing of Richard Lewis at the age of 76. The iconic comedian, known for his hilarious brand of self-deprecating humor, 
passed away from a heart attack. Lewis was a legend in the stand-up scene, performing on shows like The Tonight Show and even selling out Carnegie Hall in 1989. His routines were filled with jokes about his anxieties, hypochondria, and dating life mishaps, all delivered with his signature nervous energy. But Lewis was more than just a stand-up comic. He had a successful acting career, too, starring alongside Jamie Lee Curtis in Anything But Love and appearing in shows like Curb Your Enthusiasm and movies like Robin Hood, Men in Tights. Speaking of Curb, Lewis's portrayal of himself alongside his real-life friend Larry David was pure comedy gold. Their on-screen chemistry, filled with playful jabs and genuine friendship, was a major part of what made the show so funny. Lewis wasn't just about the laughs, though. He openly shared his personal life struggles in his autobiography, inspiring many with his journey to sobriety in 1991. Richard Lewis's comedic genius, unique personality, and dedication to his craft will be deeply missed. He leaves behind a legacy of laughter, honesty, and reminding us that even the most neurotic among us can find humor in life's little disasters.